Okay, welcome everyone after the break. For me right now comes more interesting part because we have a privilege to introduce two projects that are currently being developed here at our faculty and that involved also Omnet heavily. So I will start with a project that is called ANSA INET. Uh, right now we are uh, following INET version 3.3.0. As you can see, there is a shitload of names over here written because we are running this project since 2008 when we for the first time discovered Omnet. At that time, the research interests of our networking group was reachability analysis, ACL cross-checking, network behavior prediction. Uh, so at that time, we didn't know that much about the simulation, but we thought, like, let's say, that uh, Omnet++ is a good way how we can validate and verify what we are usually doing uh, on a daily basis, and that is configuring the Cisco devices, deploying some network design, and verifying, verifying its... Uh, its operation. At that time, the state of INET was 2006, 10, 20 version intended for Omnet 3.3, and there was also already INET Manet version for Omnet 4.0, but we felt that there are a lot of missing features that were at that time important for us because we've been interested in ACL cross referencing about traffic generators uh, to test uh, class-based queues, priority queues, weighted fair queues, and this kind of the stuff. And also, as I mentioned, our background is traditional routing and switching. We, can, uh, we have Cisco Network Academy here, so we are basically inbreeding a new generation of students to the Cisco and to the related technologies. So we have decided to extend the INET to support all the things that we are doing. And... Uh, the goal of the project is just like that, yeah? It is a motivation slide that I'm showing at every, uh, every conference, so probably I apologize to these of you who already seen it, but I will elaborate more about it. So we have the Brno University of Technology, which is quite large network. We have around 30,000 users, and we have more than 30,000 devices, and uh, certain parts have uh, thousands of users. What we are trying to, what was the initial goal was to export running configuration from devices, mm -hmm. export dynamic state of device using SNMP, because if we will just look onto the running config, we will have a snapshot of initial configuration. We will uh, don't have information about what is currently inside the routing table, what is the state of interfaces, and this kind of stuff. So we've created a tool that is able to extract all these things from the active network devices and create some unified XML description uh, that is uh, telling you how your network is currently uh, configured. Using another tool, we've been able to automatically create Omnet net file uh, for certain parts of the network. Definitely we are not speaking that we are trying to simulate everything that is happening at our network, but interesting parts. And inside the simulator, the goal was to play a little bit with various scenarios. What, is, what happened when the link goes down, you know? If we have DHCP server, whether there is some single point of failure, if it will be reachable after certain bad events that will happen in our network. Following next, uh, we used simulation result and topology configuration and put it into this miraculous machine called formal analysis that will do some mumbo jumbo and suggest you improvements that you can do uh, and you can employ and deploy in your network. Where we are, we are somewhere over here. We definitely can uh, play more with uh, the unified description of the network. Regarding this formal analysis, we've been able to uh, achieve with different projects things like ACL cross-referencing. So if you have a lot of ACL statements to see whether some statement is not basically rewriting the meaning of the other statements. And basically, to do some, uh, let's say, analysis that configuration of network is proper and there are not some typo errors or there are not some really um, visible errors. Uh, during these eight years, a lot of students has finished, uh, have finished uh, theses on, uh, this pro during, in frame of this project, including bachelor and master degree theses. So there is a lot of, lot of work have been done 
Today, it's the project that has around roughly 25,000 lines of code, excluding, of course, empty lines, excluding comments and this kind of stuff. So this is the core, I would say, of the ANSA project, the part that is extending the INET uh, buff what is already present in INET. Uh, throughout these years, we've been interested in a lot of things from the Cisco portfolio, including the ACLs, including routing protocols. Like our, one of our goal is to kind of the compare different routing protocols, protocols that we are using, just like link state protocol. protocols. So OSP version two was already there, presented in INET. We've decided to migrate it to OSP version three because we are also interested in IP version six. Another link state protocol that is being used is ISIS. ISIS was not present over there and my colleague Marcel has uh, suffered a lot to implement something, to implement like a full-fledged ISIS implementation to the, uh, to the ANSA INET. Moreover, we've been also interested in multicast routing. So we've developed uh, PIM modules for dense mode and for the sparse mode that were later indirectly adopted to the INET. And quite recently, we are also interested in distance vector routing protocols like EIGRP or Babel in order to write a paper that can somehow compare the functionality of these protocols and also, let's say, uh, protocol effectiveness of these protocols. And during the last year, we've also implemented first hop redundancy protocols that serves to get, they are backing up the functionality of your default gateway. These are protocols like GLBP, HSRP, and VRRP. And uh, we've restarted our work on OSPF, OSPF version 3. So, basically, uh, the main module that we are using on a daily basis is this thing called ANSA Router, where, we have, where we've extended node base part that is present in INET and edit our boxes over there that they are programmable like with this is uh, like with this uh, mm, bool variable that you can turn on and off different boxes so you can achieve uh, the behavior of a router that is running simultaneously for instance rip and also babel protocol uh, we've extended several parts of the inet that have been there and i'll be speaking about it a little bit more so as the first thing, I start with the network layer. So we've took what was already there, and instead of generic module that was present over here, we've added the one that we are using, and it is CLNS, which is a networking protocol that ISIS is using. And basically, it, this is networking protocol that was before IP version 4 and IP version 6. And it is heavily used by ISIS and by internet service providers in their <laughs> core networks. Uh, we've been uh, pleasantly surprised by the lower multiplexer and upper multiplexer because before the uh, INET version 3.0 we've used something similar but then it was great that we've been kind of the following a proper way how to uh, implement the network layer. So we've added CDP and LLDP for a lower multiplexing because these are the protocols that are running on layer 2 and we don't need uh, hooks to network layer. And also the upper multiplexer, uh, when we have protocols that are communicating with both protocols, we're using both uh, UDP, both TCP, so we can register them. Moreover, we've added the configurator that is usually present in here, IP version 4 and in IP version 6, and it is kind of the replacing default functionality of the configurators that are present in IP version 4 and IP version 6. The reason behind our configurator is that IP version 6 support in INET is uh, not enough for us when we want to statically configure a network, you know, like this kind of flat network configurators that are doing all addressing for you is not, that what, is not what we are using because we are taking a real configuration from a network and we need to exactly address each and every link. So uh, basically our configurator is taking this external XML file and Maybe it will be over here. Oh, it will be later. I will be speaking about configurator a little bit later. As a next thing, we've uh, extended uh, route no, routing table that was present in INET, uh, just replaced uh, the generic routing table with the CLNS routing table. We've also uh, added uh, some lines of code to IP version 4 routes, IP version 6 routes, and these routing tables 
to support more Cisco-like, I would say, feeling. So you can see that our routing table uh, looks differently than what you are used to in INET, but it is, uh, it is uh, let's say, print out of routes that you can see on the real Cisco devices. So for us, it is easy to, easy to read. And uh, we've added some uh, more constants that are being used by the Cisco devices. One thing that we needed to update it even more was original INET interface entry because it was lacking certain parameters that were important for routing protocols that we've been developing. Just like EIGRP, which is using additional parameters just like bandwidth, delay, reliability, transmission load or receiving load. So we've added them over there. Also, when we are uh, using these first hop redundancy protocols, we need virtual forwarders. So also we've extended it above this and made, let's say, kind of the refactoring of the usual display. When I will be speaking about configurator, the configurator I already mentioned it uh, two slides before. Over here you can see, let's say, example of our, how our external XML file looks like. And uh, basically for each node that is present in your network, you can see the whole setup of interface and interface parameters such as IP address, network mask, or parameters that are directly related to some routing protocol. Uh, also, there is a part regarding the routing where you can configure static routes or where you can configure various parameters for routing protocols that are not per interface based. Um, yeah, so the features. Right now, uh, the set of features that ANSA INET supports uh, is in the most, let's say, current branch that it's ANSA INET 3.3.0 because it is based on INET 3.3. Meantime, when we were upgrading and updating our code, you've been able to come up with 3.4, so there will be like another round of refactoring, but we are kind of used to it. And we support, of course, Omnet version uh, 5.0. Uh, among the things that maybe you've noticed in INET, and I believe that we've kind of the, at least helped to uh, prepare the simulation modules that are already in the INET, was our work in multicast, PIM, dense mode, PIM sparse mode, RIP, RIP, NG. And what is currently uh, operational, uh, the full-fledged implementations of uh, these protocols is ISIS for the link state, trail protocol as uh, the improvement, or I would say replacement of traditional spanning tree protocols. So protocol that is guaranteeing you loopless topology on layer two. EIGRP and bubble from distance vector, to, vector protocols, locator ID separation protocol that is, heavily, that is being pushed heavily by the Cisco as a kind of the alternative that is solving a lot of issues of nowadays internet. Issues just like routing, table, uh, inscalability, or cumbersome, mobile, uh, cumbersome mobility. Uh, a lot of traffic engineering issues. Um, we've also added the CDP and LLDP protocols that are protocols run over layer two. They are basically management protocols, but CDP can run in, a, I would say, can operate a special mode called ODR, which is able to, or which is good for hub and spoke topologies where you read just a simple, simple routing. There is one hub and a lot of spokes, and using this CDP, you can configure really simple routing to these kind of topologies it is being used by, um, in certain use cases. Also, HSRP, VRRP, and GLB, uh, GLBP as first hop redundancy protocols. Uh, right now, we have a student who is working on OSPF version three. It's like the third student in a row on OSPF version three, so I just hope that this one will finally <laughs> did the job. And uh, in, uh, uh, because, Research and our faculty is a uh, lot about IP version 6. We are uh, really interested in IP version 6 security and how the things are working on the IP version 6 network layer. So we'd like to update the things that we found in RFCs and that are not present in IP version 6 uh, network layer by the Omnet++. And uh, we have in our mind one uh, paper about comparing DHCP and other auto-configuration uh, things, just like the stateless link uh, auto-configuration from IPv6 or the stateful DHCPv6. 
Uh, as I mentioned, this project is running for eight years, so we have we have a lot of abandoned code, just like STP or RSTP, which are operational, but right now they are present in INET and there's no reason why to port our version over there. A uh, lot of quality of service stuff, like in the priority queues, weighted fair queues, and some lousy traffic generators. So, uh, after eight years, we don't have that much citation. We have just, I would say, this two official citations that somebody actually used our uh, extension of the INET framework. One is uh, from people from Hungary, another one is the dissertation thesis that was finished in, uh, finished in Slovakia. And quite recently, a company called GMB Innovating Solution expressed their interest in our LISP simulation modules. So, if you would like to, let's say, read more about our project, do not hesitate and vi visit the official project webpage. Unfortunately, it is not updated, so better ask me or send me an email. Uh, but uh, great would be if you can start our GitHub repository, you can browse our code because it is publicly available. You can see for yourself whether we have something to offer maybe for your research. So that is all from me for the unsigned. I don't know if you have any questions. Is it like, yeah? Uh, are you actually using IPv6 in uh, Here, in the university? No, in, uh, in your school. Yes, a lot of. Because, as I mentioned, like, we are developing routing protocol simulation modules, just like EIGRP, OSP version 3, and all of them are using IPv6. So, in order to make some meaning for routing protocol to simulate the IPv6 we are using all the time. Are you using the protocol from or are you using What, IP version 6? Uh, we are using the original INET one with some lines of code that we've added f here and there just to be sure that uh, it is according to the behavior that we believe is good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, so it's a big We would be thrilled if we can have something like that or it will be kind of accepted as an official, one of the official frameworks on it. It will be really honor for us. But uh, uh, we are definitely open for discussion that we have code that we believe can be migrated directly into the INET and we will then move on to developing a new parts, you know. But for us right now, the problematic parts uh, which, uh, why we cannot migrate it that easily that I can build just create a pull request directly from your repo, are our extension on parts of the INET that I believe are kind of the core, just like IP version 4 route, IP version 6 route, interface entry, uh, routing table uh, for version 4 and version 6. I mean, your project URL is very long and it's difficult to Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. So if you created a We can try, yeah, definitely. It is hosted by one by, by of, of our servers. So that's the reason why it is not very nice URL. Could we just better it here? Mm -hmm. So that would be probably it. If you'll be interested, I can show you around the poster or even after the presentation, I can show you our code and what kind of, let's say, improvements We've done, maybe you've uh, noticed when I was running this bubble routing protocol, we've also kind of extending uh, how network lines are marked with the IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses because we no need both of them. And yeah, yeah, this kind of the little improvements that we are using, maybe it could be also interested for you guys. So thank you very much for your attention. I will, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And I will pass it to uh, Marcel that will uh, show another interesting project that is uh, being developed at our faculty. And I would say it is more visionary than, definitely more visionary than Hansa Inet that is trying to somehow compare different routing protocols, compare different